G'day everybody and welcome to another video review from ChronicleChamber.com Today we are reviewing the newest trade paperback from Fru, which is the complete Pirates of the Red Dragon saga featuring Princess uh, Sin and all her henchmen. So this has the original stories from Team Phantom Men in colour for the first time in Australia. Then it has the two um, the two prequel stories created by Dale McCanty and um, Jason Paulos, uh, published in colour for the first time in Australia, and also the first time ever seen uh, the sequel parts, part one and two, by Julie Dittrich and Wendell Cavalcanti. Now, uh, a bit of background information on Julie Dittrich will be on our website as well, including where she sits in the world of the Phantom as a female creator. Okay, so we'll go start from the beginning. Um, now this, it's a great design from Daniel um, Picky, or Picky 8, as he likes to likes to sign his name. Um, this is, we would have all seen it before with the board game. Uh, this has come out with the board game. Um, it's worth the wait. The, the, the colors are striking. Uh, interestingly, it has a PG rating. We'll touch upon a little bit more of that in a second. Uh, the spine design is all the same. The presentation is very, very similar as we have seen in previous um, publications. So you've got your blacks, your jungle saying, you know, very heavy on the black, which makes everything lift. There's a, um, a, a beautiful tagline by... Um, not a tagline, a bit of an intro by Petty Anderson, living in sin with the princess. A bit misleading, but it's a great story, and it talks about basically the difference of reading the comics back in the 70s to now, which is about 50 years later. Uh, it addresses nudity. Now, nudity is in throughout this, but I'll let you decide whether that is an issue or not, and that's the reason why it's got a PG rating. Now, the paper quality... Again, as per all through trade paperbacks, it's top quality. Um, if I was to say one thing at the front, I kind of wish this is what annuals would be like every year. Maybe if they produced an extra trade paperback and skip the annual, I would be happy because this is exciting. This is exciting to read, even though I've read half the stories before. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through each story, and then we'll go from there. So, whoops, uh, story one, Jason's colouring. Now, Jason's colouring for his stories is top-notch. It matches it amazingly. Uh, straight up the front, I'm not sure about the phantom shooting the horn off a rhino. Rhinos are endangered. How about nicking him on the ear or... Or, or riding alongside the uh, the rhino and then jumping off and and holding his ears and veering him away from the jungle patrol man might have been a little bit more, dare I say it, political correct, politically correct. Um, I remember there was a story where uh, there was an old jungle saying where the phantom would shoot fleas off a warthog, so you know maybe that might be a little bit better. All right, I think I said this in the review, but uh, Tana Meanheart, who is um, the miner, a bit of a, a shout out to a famous WA person. Um, and page 23, what I love about these stories, this, this story that uh, Dale has done, is that he's adding character to these secondary characters. Um, just back here. Uh, Abbott Point in Australia. I'm not sure if Dale is a fan of uh, an ex-Prime Minister or not. I love about, getting back to this, I love how um, uh, Dale and Jason are exploring um, stories with Weldo and Orkham. It's just, it's just, it works well. Another thing that I like is these intro pages that break up the stories. Uh, it works well. Jason's stories have these beautiful big panels as well, which work very well. Um, interestingly, there's this one, which is part two, which is the cover. 
but it didn't work it didn't have it on part one now personally i prefer this than the cover that we saw before so i think it's a wise choice um, as a, uh, one of the other things that I like about this apart from delving and developing the characters of the secondary characters is that we see Devil and Fraka behaving like heroes in their own right and being standalone characters rather than just bit characters so it's quite good um, now one thing I thought that was interesting is um, is on top of here on page 47 he's talking about how he's ran out of um i used all my gunpowder to create that flaming cool coal skull now this is probably a problem that we see in a lot of phantom stories is that he doesn't carry around magazine spare magazine clips in a previous in a story by tony D. paul and mike manley he actually carries around some extra clips so maybe that could be something that gets carried on a little bit more Okay, so now we're going into, this is another cover, this is the original cover from Antonio Lemus. Now we're going into the original Team Phantom End stories. As you can see, they've been coloured. Now, these are the very similar colours, I think they are the colours, maybe slightly adjusted as what um, Egmont recently published as well. Um, one thing that I probably would have liked to seen, going back to this, is that if they produced the Egmont cover alongside it rather than just three little covers up there as well. It would have been nice having the original Egmont covers as well as the free covers. Um, as I said before, this was originally created by uh, Phantom Men in black and white and for the first time published by Fru in black and white as well. Now this is a 50 year old story and it still feels quite modern. Um, here's one of the nudity pictures that I was telling about and there's it's mainly in this one and in part three which is the main nudity um, so this is part four a brilliant cover by Jason uh, no by J uh, Jamie Johnson sorry um, in this story Diana and the Phantom are perhaps captured a little bit too easily um, in page 116 uh, is a good example where they're just, I don't know, they just kind of get caught a little bit easily. Um, but, you know, it's a good story, just sometimes maybe caught a little bit easily. Okay, part three of the original saga, which is story five of this trade paperback. Brilliant cover by Chris Well. Um, now, this is the part here that was the genesis for the board game. Uh, you can learn more about that if you listen to some past podcasts with Chronicle Chamber and the creative team from the uh, board game. Alrighty, so now on page 20, starting from 29, 30, and then there's a couple of page, there's a whole new uh, girl villain team called the Mumba. Now it would have been great if, or it's a special force of, of females, it would have been good if whether we see these again in the next part or we see them in another upcoming story, but it's a great opportunity that kind of feels missed that they haven't really been, uh, we don't see them again. Um, you know, so we got here, we got the Phantom doing a fairly miraculous escape as he tends to do. Uh, some more hair, um, uh, some hair raising escapees and then we've got probably the main parts of the nudity where Princess Sin shows her um, insecurities and asking the Phantom if she is attractive and the Phantom's doing his best thing by trying to look away um, I'll let you be the judge whether that's necessary or unnecessary um, in my personal opinion I think they needed to keep it because a lot of fans don't like stories being edited and censored and if that was done it might have put a bit of a negative spin on it so i think it's easier to be done They're easier to be kept and then to go from there one thing others will argue is did the phantom really need to give her a kiss um you know he kind of has a bit of a soft spot for girls 
On their deathbeds, uh, Susie from the Governor and Susie is another one that kind of rings a bell. Okay, so now this story here, uh, story six and story seven, which is the parts by Julie Dittrich, uh, drawn by Wendell Cavalcanti, lettered by Frank Schultz, and edited by Glenn Ford, and also coloured by Ivan Peterson. Now these are new stories that have never been, um, uh, what would you call it, never been seen before. So we'll probably focus a little bit more time on these. So this is Wendell's second story and Julie's first story. Now, I'm not a fan of the glider up front. The glider is not needed. Uh, another thing, probably my main issues are in the first couple of pages with this. Um, you know, the, and then in here it's got, here's an almost mythical protector of Bengala. We have to use our local tribesmen to call him. He's known as the Phantom. That's all well and good in theory, but the Phantom isn't Batman. He's unknown. He works in the shadows. It would have been better if it was the Jungle Patrol instead of the Bengala Coast Guard, and then they had contacted the Unknown Commander. That's just a little bit of thing that I personally, as a fan fan, would have preferred. Uh, the artwork, you can't fault the artwork. Um, so, you know, and then the glider. Why does the Phantom need the glider? He could have used the Mora tribe, um, you know, could have gotten there better. And I just, yeah, I don't know. The glider just seemed a little bit gimmicky, a little, a little bit Batman-y for my like. Or even the Waga could have asked for the Phantom, could have been another one as well. Um, Wendell has great big panels. Uh, this is the first time I've seen his work in colour. First time we saw it was in black and white, and black and white in Reekham, and it was very, very gritty. These stories, again, this is very gritty, but it works well in colour. Uh, Wendell and Ivan have done a great job in here. Um, now. One good thing about these stories is that the Phantom gets hurt. In this one, the Phantom gets bitten. Uh, in the last one, uh, the Phantom got um, uh, got attacked, uh, got stabbed, sorry. So it's kind of good to see the Phantom getting injured um, and his, you know, his, and stuff because it just adds another another element to the story and that the Phantom, it's kind of hard for the Phantom to get away. Um, now there's one negative, if I had to be another, draw another negative, this two page spread here, I love the two page spread, but it's not exactly clear that you got to read across the page. You know, maybe just little arrows could have made it a little bit more clearer for the dumb or for the people that aren't paying attention that you got to read across and not going like this. Um, now, there's another thing here on page, on part two, where this guy gets eaten. Now, it's quite adult, I don't have a problem with that. What I'm not sure on is, is this a pirate, or is this one of the guys that he rescued originally? So, I'm not really sure on that. Um, it's not really clear, if you know what I mean. Okay, um, this eel... Do eels like this actually exist in warm, tropical um, locations like Bengala? I'll leave that up to the people that know a little bit more than me, but maybe a shark would have been better than an eel. I love these big panels, just like this panel breakdown as well. Brilliant um, drawing by Wendell. Um, Ivan's colours in this are great. Now, Ivan, the majority of the time when he's done colours for um, Free, it's always for the classic stories, uh, majority of the time. But this is a modern story, and he, his palette is very modern, and it fits very well with this as well. So Ivan's done a good job with that as well. Um, now, on here, maybe we are going to see more parts, but it says here, Seven Secret Mansions. So maybe we're going to see... Maybe the Phantom needs to go through and identify some of these seven secret mansions. And maybe, just maybe, this is where he can battle the all-girl band that Princess Sin has um, trained up as well. That will be kind of cool. Uh, I've got another favourite page coming up here. Just this here. Just these big panels. Um, just brilliant panels. There's no words. You don't need words. Just action. Uh, good work, whoever, um, whether that was a directive from Julie 
or whether it was Wendell or whether it was the editor, but this is good work. I really do like that. Now, the ending. I'm not really sure about the ending either. It kind of just ended. The Phantom escaped, and then that was it. Like, how did he get off the island? Um, I don't know. Some people may like that abrupt ending, and then it kind of just fitting nicely, but... I don't know, it just left me a bit empty and maybe wanting more. Maybe that was the design of the rider. But and then the, the tooth being in the leg, it just oh, I don't know. It it felt like it felt just a little bit wrapped up too nicely for my liking. Um will Princess Sin come back? Will the Phantom have to go through these seven other locations? Uh will he have to battle more part people of Princess Sin? I hope so. However, maybe some people might think that it's a little bit long in the tooth. Um, this is a great enjoyable read. Um, you got to remember that the first three parts, which is story three, four, and five, came first. Fifty years later, we got uh, story one and two and story six and seven. The creative team have done a brilliant job in matching the stories to match those original three and make and making the stories kind of merge and read very well so they've done a good job with that as well um if i had to pull negatives it would have to be with stories six and seven and it was probably more to do with the plot lines of it it's just some of the plot just didn't really sit with me but that's probably the only negatives i really have uh positives the paper quality is amazing the color uh, is amazing. The art by all the creative teams from uh, George Bess, uh, Jason Paulos, uh, Wendell Cavacanti, the cover artist, Daniel, um, the original ones as well, uh, are amazing. The stories are great. They're edgy. They put you on your on your on your edge of your feet. You don't really know what to do. You um, they're kind of adult. You know, Princess Sin is stabbing the Phantom with a knife. He's getting attacked. Um, Princess Sin is an memorable villain. In my in our podcast with the top 10 villains, she personally was in my top 10. Um, so overall, you have to be a fan of this. Yes, the trade paperback could have maybe come out a little bit earlier uh, with it being delayed, but... You're not going to be disappointed with this. If I had to give it a, a, a rating out of five good marks, I would have to give it a four and a half, and it would be very, very close to a five good marks out of five good marks. The only negatives are probably to do with maybe a little bit more reference, you know, these could have been a little bit bigger and in the three stories and some of the plot holes in the last part as well. But overall... You can't fault it. Fruit are knocking these trade paperbacks out of the park. If I had my way, I would like to see a minimum of two, maybe even three, maybe even four trade paperbacks, graphic novels, those type of things released a year. And I would rather this than the annual. The annual maybe has run its course and maybe we need to get more of these. Let us know what you think. Uh, go out and buy it. Go out and buy the board game. You will not be disappointed. Uh, and once you've read it, let us know what your opinions are. Until next time, we thank you for watching our uh, videos. We thank you for following us on Facebook and our social media. And our website is chroniclechamber.com. Uh, and until next time, happy phantoming.